Breaking news right now, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan speaking live with Jin Psaki by his side. Let's listen live. In Rome, he'll also have the opportunity on the margins to engage with uh, key leaders on a range of issues of importance to the American people, including supply chain resilience, energy prices, the Iranian nuclear program, and more. Uh, in Glasgow, the president will give a major address on climate as part of COP26. Uh, and also have the opportunity to engage on the margins there on a range of important issues, including the Build Back Wet uh, Better World initiative, B3W, that the G7 announced uh, at the summit in June. Uh, lots to say about the trip and happy to take your questions. I just want to make three broad points uh, before we uh, open it up. The first is, after a lot of commentary in recent weeks about the state of the transatlantic relationship, the United States and Europe head into this, these two summits aligned and united on the major elements of the global agenda. In just the past few weeks, we've seen the U.S. and the EU come together for joint action on COVID-19. We've seen the U.S. and EU launch a global methane pledge and other key climate initiatives. The U.S. and EU have launched a Trade and Technology Council to set the rules and standards for economics and technology in the 21st century. And President Biden and key European partners will sit down at these two summits to coordinate policies on Iran, on supply chains, on global infrastructure efforts, and so much else. I would point out that neither China nor Russia will be attending the summit in person at the leader level, largely, it seems, due to COVID-19. The U.S. and Europe will be there, uh, and they'll be there energized and united at both the G20 uh, and COP26, driving the agenda. Uh, shaping the agenda as it relates to these uh, significant uh, international issues. Second, the trip is going to give the president an opportunity to advance some of his highest affirmative priorities on behalf of the American people. You are going to see firsthand in living color uh, what foreign policy for the middle class is all about. For one thing, he will cement progress on the global minimum tax, a, a major achievement secured with American leadership, with presidential leadership. Uh, that will help stop a global corporate race to the bottom and provide the resources that can be invested in workers and communities here in the United States. He'll be laser focused on supply chains and energy prices because he knows that these issues impact working families here in America. And in advancing the Build Back Better World initiative, the B3W initiative, um, he will show how a high standards, climate friendly alternative to the Belt Road initiative can help American firms and American workers compete globally on every aspect of infrastructure from physical to digital to health. Third, I would just point out that we see no contradiction between pursuing ambitious and aggressive action to meet this pivotal moment when it comes to the climate crisis and supporting a sustained and swift economic recovery that delivers security and opportunity for the American people. The president going into COP26 has committed the United States to decisive action this decade, a 50 to 52 percent reduction in carbon emissions by 2030, a doubling of our international finance commitment consistent with the $100 billion Paris goal, and he intends to make good on these commitments. He also intends to address the short-term imba imbalance in supply and demand in the global energy picture so that the economic recovery here in the United States and elsewhere around the world is reinforced rather than undermined. We can do both. We intend to do both. That's the agenda and the mindset the President will take with him when we go to Europe uh, later this week. And with that, I'd be happy to take your questions. Yeah. Jake, um, back in June, you and the President said that there's no substitute for face-to-face -face dialogue with, uh, between leaders. And you signaled then that the President, President Biden and President Xi uh, could possibly meet on the sidelines of the G20. That's obviously not happening since Xi is not attending. Do you see that as a, a missed opportunity, either for the U.S. or for China? And, and how do you expect to make progress in the U.S.-China relationship if you can't even get these two leaders in a room together? And then secondly, uh, the President suggested last week that one of the reasons OPEC isn't doing more to ramp up supply is because he has refused thus far to speak with uh, the Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman. <coughs> Will the President speak with the Crown Prince? Is there a possibility of a meeting on the sidelines of the G20 uh, between the two? So on the second, I don't have anything to announce. We don't even know who is coming to represent uh, Saudi Arabia at that event. So. Uh, we will see what happens over the course of the coming days. On the first question, um, I was in Zurich just a couple of weeks ago meeting with the Politburo member Yang Jiechi, who's responsible for foreign policy and national security policy for China. And uh, he and I agreed uh, that the two presidents will have the opportunity to have a virtual meeting before the end of the year. I don't have a date to announce today, 
but they will be able to sit as close to face-to-face -to -face as technology allows uh, to see one another and spend a significant amount of time going over the full agenda. President Xi has chosen not to attend these summits. Uh, he's chosen not to leave China at all in calendar year 2021 to see any leader. That's, of course, his choice. So uh, we are... Well, I'm not going to characterize the decision-making he's making. All I can say is from the U.S. President's perspective, President Biden does believe it's important that he have the opportunity uh, to have a face-to-face -face engagement with Xi Jinping, and if it's not possible in person because of Xi's uh, travel constraints, uh, doing it by a uh, virtual meeting is the next best thing. That's what we're intending to do, and we're intending to do that because in an era of intense competition between the U.S. and China, intense diplomacy at the highest levels, leader-level diplomacy, is vital to effectively managing this relationship. Yeah. Uh, just broadly speaking, as we're now looking roughly 48 hours before the president lands here, you just said the president intends to make good on these uh, commitments as they relate to climate change. How important is it, in your view, that he lands in Europe with this deal secured here at home as it relates to climate change in terms of convincing allies that he will make good on this promise? I think what the allies are looking at is the effort that President Biden has undertaken to design and now negotiate an ambitious, effective, practical set of investments uh, in climate, in clean energy, and in infrastructure, and in economic growth in the United States. They're excited about it. They raise it uh, when we see them. Uh, it, when we see our counterparts, they raise it with him. They want to see the United States making these investments. They also recognize that the United States has a set of democratic institutions, has a Congress, that this is a process that it needs to be worked through. And so I believe that whether there is a deal this week or whether the negotiations continue, uh, there will be a lot of energy and enthusiasm for the effort the president is undertaking right now to make bold, far-reaching investments that will deliver on his commitments, both with respect to climate and with respect to economic growth in Do the United States. Do you not States. see this as his credibility weakened if he shows up there without a deal reach? I think you've got a sophisticated set of world leaders. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them. Tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.